join me now on the A34 and I'm actually on my way up to Oxford from Southampton and I'm going actually to take a look at maybe changing birth of the 1250 GSTE for a BMW R1250 GS Adventure TE exclusive. Now, I apologise if some of you don't have those models around the world, but here in Europe and certainly the UK, we're pretty lucky that BMW basically sell the bikes pretty much fully loaded. Um, the only thing I had to have on this bike that was additional was the SOS button here and the um, alarm. I'm pretty sure that was that was all that was extra over and above the TE specification. So you know it comes with all of the ESA suspension and the pro riding modes and all of those types of things. Uh, the TFT screen keyless, all of that type of stuff. So obviously the adventure is pretty much the same thing. Comes fully loaded with all that you'd expect. Now. What I would say is, is um, maybe people would be saying that coming up two years old, this 1250, some people may actually be saying, well, why would you actually want to change that already, Nick? Well, there's a couple of things that I like about the adventure and over and above this bike. Now, I'm going to say straight off, nothing will change my mind about this bike. This bike has been, uh, I don't know what we've done now, a couple of uh, 9,200 9, miles together, I would guess and they've been pain-free, relaxing, comfortable, no drama, miles. Um, been to Scotland and around Scotland and all over uh, Devon and Cornwall. Not yet taken her abroad, but hoping to do a tour down to the Pyrenees on the Spanish side uh, later on this summer. But anyway, all of that said, nothing against this bike. I would, I would, I would advocate people buying this bike for all of the reasons that I've given on my various reviews and I can't really rate it highly enough. That said, there are a couple of pluses with the adventure that, that I just like. They might not suit everybody and they might actually be a negative for some people, but I have had, um, I'm quite tall bodied and I have had some issues with the wind protection on this bike and as much as it's perfectly adequate, but on a long journey, um, I'd like to maybe get a little more wind cover from the screen. Now this is the standard GS screen and in my accessory review, I was saying that I might actually fit a screen and many of you recommended the MRA Vario screen and actually I had the MRA Vario screen for Christmas. And it's not that I've been too lazy to fit it, I just thought that it would be very good to tie some ribbons on my helmet and, and jacket and all of those other things and try and scientifically show you if there was any difference between this standard GS screen and the MRA Vario screen. Anyway, that's not happened. So um, what I would say, however, is many, many people when I was actually asking about a, a different screen to the standard GS one, many people said, well, you might take, want to take a look at the Adventure one, which is a bigger screen, and the Adventure has wind deflectors down the side of the fairing. Now, I can appreciate the reasons why. It's, it's got a bigger tank and everything else, so um, it might actually need that to stop adverse reactions to handling with, with wind. But anyway, that, that's, that's one of the things, is that I feel it might have, it does have a bigger screen and, and might give a little more wind protection. Now, the second thing is, uh, one of my biggest things with motorcycling, particularly being fresh back to motorcycling and all the worries around, you know, getting to my age and suddenly going back on motorbikes, I think it's probably those that get taken the most are those that think they can ride a motorbike um, and find out that they can't handle the power and various other things. So I'm not about racing around the place, but one of the things I am about is road presence, so people being able to see me. Now, uh, a Mini is just coming up here on my right-hand side, and you'll see that just sat on the bike normally, I've got it on cruise control, so this is about as high as it'll get, I'm higher than it. Now there's a van just coming with a light flashing and my top of my head is just about level with the top of that van. So the GS itself has quite a considerable amount of 
road presence on its own. But the GS Adventure is, I feel, a step on again. It's got it's got very wide fairings. It's got a tall tank. I don't think the seat height is any bigger, and the frame is probably the same, and all of those things. So, as a person, I'm probably sat in exactly the same position. But it just feels like a a bigger boat, a, a bigger presence. Um, added to that, on the presence front, whilst I would switch my D4 Denali's, which I've done a fitment for on one of my videos, probably reference it to a card up here, but um, I, I would retrofit those onto the Adventure as well, but the Adventure does come with an additional set, or at least a standard set of additional LED spotlights fitted to the crash bars, and that means that I don't have to buy, as I was intending to do for the GS here, a, a set of maybe D2s or D1s to supplement my D4s, because again, I'm all about presence. I don't apologize to anybody for bright lights at the front. I want people to know I'm there. So that's another positive. Um, a, a reasonable positive of the adventure is the fact that I fitted Wunderlich uh, lower engine crash bars to this this bike, and, and actually they served me well because they did once fall off the side stand, and that probably saved me from cracking a cover. Um, but they're still on the bike and undamaged apart from a very small superficial scratch on the corner of them. Um, but the GS Adventure comes with lower and upper crash bars, again, as standard. Now, as I say, I'm looking at the um, GS Adventure exclusive, which looks like this. Um, I think it looks pretty fairly pretty. I, I, I call it almost a camouflage colour. Um, but I shall be having it with gold wheels. So the gold wheels are an extra, I think, about 60 quid or something. I like the spoked wheels. Um, I, I like the alloy wheels on this when I first had them, but I, I do find aesthetically the spoke wheels quite attractive. And, and I think with the gold rims and the sort of matte colours of this bike and the gold calipers, I think, um, I think it actually sets it off quite well. Anyway, we will see when all of these things are done, whether that actually happens. Now, the last thing I think probably as positives with the adventure, and, and all of these things you might think, well, they're fairly trivial, Nick. Why would you want to be stumping up, you know, another five grand after two years to swap your bikes through? Um, and that, by the way, is probably going to be somewhere near the number. Um, but part of that reason is because I've been on a couple of tours, and this bike has almost to the nail 200 miles of range. So if you fill it up, uh, the little thing on the front here that currently says 95 um, actually says 203 or 204. So about 200 miles to a tank for. Now, that's plenty, particularly as the majority of tours I've been on has got at least one, if not more, sports bikes. And, you know, they're in the range of 110 to 120 miles. So my 200 miles, if I fill up every time they do, is absolutely plenty. However, I've also been on some tours where we've had sports bikes and we've had adventure riders. And the GS Adventure has, I think, about a 10-litre tank additionally, um, which, whatever, it gives just over, I think, 100 miles of range. So it puts the range up to about 310. And whilst that might seem trivial, you know, every minute spent in a, 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 a fuel station is a minute that I don't get back of my life. So... If you can avoid filling up as much as possible, I think that's a plus. Now, what it does mean technically on a tour with sports bikes is I wouldn't need to fill up in that middle one because I would know full well that they would need more fuel in 100 or so miles. So, um, you know, when they're making their first fill up, I would still have 200 miles of range. And, and in fact, if they made their second fill up, I could almost skip that one as well. And it would be me that wanted to fill up just prior to them on the on the third fill up. So, so the range is another is another positive. Um, what I have got, obviously, that I can detract from the sum that they're going to ask me for the bike is in November, this bike, Bertha, is two years old. So she's going to need a two-year service, which I think is just over 300 quid. 
I need to renew the uh, tracker subscription, which is 109 quid, and the GS Adventure now comes fitted with the Data Tool Track King Adventure, which is, I think, now called the Stealth um, Tracker, and they give you the first year's subscription. So 300 quid saved for the service, 109 quid saved for the subscription, 92 pounds saved for the road fund license, the road tax, um, which of course is included in the price of the of the other bike. And I also have the opportunity, of course, to sell some of the accessories that I've got. The the dealer has priced my bike based on the crash bars and the Vario luggage. Um, so anything else that I've got on the Denali lights, the Can Smart, the Inov camera or cameras, um, all of those little little bits, the mud sling, the Avant, all of those are available and can be fitted. I've checked, bar in the bracket on the Denali's, um, can be can be fitted to the to the new bike. So uh, that's what I'm aiming to go and look at and to test ride, and, and we'll show you a bit of the test ride and see if some of the things I'm hoping for come to light. Now, lastly, I am intending not to have the BMW luggage. Um, it does come fitted with the racks for the BMW luggage, uh, side case racks and the top box rack, but the reason I'm not having the BMW luggage is, one, it's, it's obviously very expensive. It's about 1,400 quid. As, a, as an option for the three boxes. Um, and for that same money, I can get the Givy uh, 37 litre side case for the uh, side with the exhaust, the 45 litre for the other side, so they look matched at the back because the, the rack that they're on actually um, expands more on the 37 litre side to miss the exhaust. I can also get the toolbox, the, the additional auxiliary toolbox that sits inside the pannier frame and its mounting frame and the top box i can believe it or not get the four i think it's 45 litre one which is the big one the beer moth thing which but it does take two lids and that sometimes if you've got a pillion passenger is nice to have something that takes a couple of lids side by side but i for the same money in fact for less money than the total bmw three boxes i could also get the smaller uh, um, I'm not sure what the size is. I think it might be 42 litre. I'll, I'll put up the actual sizes because um, I'm obviously on the ride here and not actually f totally familiar with them yet. But effectively get what I would call the single helmet Jivy uh, box, the double helmet Jivy box, um, the two side panniers, all the frames and the toolbox for less than I would pay for the BMW cases. And I would have those in black finish, not aluminium. So that's, I think, another plus. Whilst I love the video, the uh, Vario panniers that I've got, the one downside of the, video, of the Vario panniers is the overall size. You can only get one lid in the top box expanded. You can only get one lid in the uh, left-hand pannier expanded and then you've got little room for two people's riding gear um, and obviously the Vario panniers do open outwards so sideways which if you haven't got my inner bags I do have my inner bags so it sort of makes it a bit mute but if you don't have the inner bags you can find that stuff just topples out on the road particularly if you've got the bike on the side stand so you know the fact that the Jivy ones and in fact the BMW aluminium case uh, the lid opens vertically and in fact on the Jimmy ones you can take the lid off totally if you want to if you're you know filling up ready to go on tour then um, then I think that's a, a positive as well anyway we're nearly at Oxford now in fact we're just coming up to Didcot so maybe another 15 20 minutes join me then and we'll get out on the exclusive and see where we go okay so we're um we're on the 1250 Adventure. It's not the exclusive model, it's the TE. Um, so the paintwork is slightly different, but obviously the rest of the features of the bike will be pretty much the same. Um, I've shot through from Oxford through Whitney, Bryce Norton, Carterton, and I'm now out on the Farringdon Road here. Um, areas that I know pretty well, I've got to say. Um, so we're here at 60 mile an hour, and whilst I've not really bashed it into lots of turns at the moment, the tank is full, so that'll give me a better idea of handling on the bike um, with the extra weight involved with the 
with the 10 extra litres. One of the things I am definitely noticing though is that there is less wind, uh, less wind noise and less wind effect with this larger uh, GSA screen. Um, whilst you don't ride a bike looking down like this, um, the, the, the overall bike itself is obviously uh, bigger from up here. Um, but, I mean, I've literally done 10 or 12 miles on it, and now it just feels like my bike. Um, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that much bigger, that much heavier, um, or that much more imposing, really. I don't know quite how that reflects, you know, for other vehicles, which is, which is my main reason for maybe going for the adventure. This is Alverscott randomly, he used to live in Alverscott for uh, some of my formative years. Spent 34 years living Whitney, Carterton, Alverscott, um, before I moved down into the Southampton area. So, as I say, I know this area quite well. Um, the wind, the wind uh, force is helped not only by the larger screen, but there's also these wing deflectors here. Um, because obviously you've got a much bigger spread of tank here, you have the ability to mount that on this uh, on this fairing piece here so you know you're going to get less from that anyway um, not going to tank this but let's just get past this one so at least we don't have a vehicle in front get myself back down to the speed limit as quickly as I can um, so that's about it really um, the strange part about it is and and I suppose it's pretty much as I would have said it, is it ain't that much different to my bike. And I'm now, you know, just having done 10 or 12 miles, it's feeling, you know, very familiar. Um, so, it's, it's, uh, it's lovely, as, as is my bike. It's just now whether I can justify the, sort of 5,000 and some odd pounds that, 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 that the dealer wants me to change a bike that is just coming up to two years old. So that's the, that's the part my head has got to play with is that whether I want the adventure over the GS sort of that much. And indeed, of course, a new bike. So everything that goes with that, new tires, new brakes, um, you know, new engine back under the um, you know, none of the more expensive services which I'm about to run into on, on my GS. And so we will see a little more riding, a um, little more of these back roads so that we can see the handling and then a blast down probably the A420 back down towards the Wolvercote roundabout in Oxford. And that will allow me to see how the real wind deflection is. So. So through Clamfield and out towards Radcott and Farringdon. Just coming into Farringdon now. But she handles exactly the same. Um, as I say, there is a full tank of fuel, so there's 10 litres more there, but uh, it's, it's really not noticeable. And I think that's always, I mean, a little bit like the GS is just generally good handling because all of the weight is in the boxer engine way down low. So, um, you know, even with an extra 10 litres up here, it's not making a significant difference. So, anyway, into Farringdon we go. This is bringing back memories because um, living just down in Southampton, I don't get down here quite as often as I should do. And um, last time I came through here, I was probably on a push bike.
So we've done a little bit of um, a little bit of dual carriageway riding, just a little bit. We'll get a little bit more in a minute. We've um, we've done some twisters. It handles well. It doesn't handle any different to mine, if I'm totally truthful. Um, most of the work has been around the country roads, um, but there's been a fair bit of traffic being a Friday afternoon, so it's not like I've been able to blast it. Not that that was really what it's about, because performance. Um, is bound to be incredibly similar to mine. I can't see it being too much, too much different. Um, see if we can get past a few of these. In fact, all of them. So we're just coming up to the River Thames here at and the Rose Revived pub just outside Stanlake. Technically Newbridge. Again, changed quite a bit since I was a lad, but it's still here. And I'm led to believe very nice too. smell of barbecuing food. In fact, both pubs are open there, the Rose Revived and the Maybush. Um, the Maybush they'd almost given up on because it's actually slightly lower than the Rose Revived and when the Thames floods, then the Maybush really suffers and I think they'd almost given up on being able to trade from it. Um, but it's certainly trading there now and that's good to see. Certainly the river does get very high there when there's a particularly wet season and, and all of this area around here, all of the fields are all floodplains, um, which are designed to flood, but then of course we all build on them and that puts even more water off the roofs onto the floodplain and it can't cope. But anyway, that's another political matter. So we're gonna head through here now. We'll come out on the roundabout at Kingston Back Pews and we'll turn left and blat our way down the A420 hopefully getting a reasonable bit of pace up so I can test the wind deflection again. But certainly, you know, riding wise and handling wise, this is no different whatsoever to mine. And I think the extra weight of the 10 liters at the top of the tank is offset by the huge weight of the very low slung boxer engine. So I think it's still um, very, very difficult to say that this is a bike which doesn't handle incredibly well considering its size. And having been riding this now for just about an hour, I really do feel that it's just like my bike. Um, which is again, another reason why would I cough up all of that additional money to replace a two year old bike with a brand new bike. We'll have to give that some thought. So a small part of the road here where I can probably just about maintain a motorway speed. It's not very long because it'll just go down to the roundabout at the bottom here, but um, I'm just sort of testing to see. And I can tell you that the, the wind is going over the top of my head. It's just about touching my shoulder blades and actually just, just skimming my ribs. And that is without question far less wind than I get from my uh, R1250GS non-adventure. And I think that pretty much has down, there's a bit of a shape here. The screen is much higher. And of course we have these wind deflectors down here um, on the side of the tank. So without question, if wind is a fatigue for you, then the adventure will very much give you less fatigue through sort of wind pressure, if you like. And certainly if I wind the screen down, to its lowest position. You may even be able to hear the extra wind noise and without doubt now that's hitting me pretty well square on the visor so it's not even clearing my head. So we'll wind that back up. So 
So there we go. That's uh, just a very short wind test. Not definitive because it's not like 20 or 30 miles of blasting on the motorway, but you can very much tell the difference between this screen and these little wind deflectors, which I think we shouldn't take for granted. But uh, but certainly those two features, I think, make for a make for a much more protected riding position from wind. Okay, so back on the uh, good old faithful Bertha 1250 GS, my one. Um, just to give a little bit of a summary then of how I feel. And, and interestingly now, having got off the adventure and back on this bike, the wind deflection of the adventure is significantly different to the wind deflection on the GS. I'm getting very buffeted from sort of my chest here um, and really just about here on my head. And I've got the screen in the fully up position. And I, I've never really complained about the wind deflection on the GS at all, but without question, the uh, wind deflection on the GSA with the bigger screen, taller screen, and with the little wind deflectors that sit here, um, it does make quite a significant difference to the overall uh, wind deflection. So that's a, you know, a pretty important point. Interestingly as well, um, Ryan, the uh, service, sorry, the sales guy at the dealership um, is saying that when it does get to winter and those guys have to ride the bikes distance, um, they row over the adventure because it is so much more wind protected. And one of the interesting things of that wind protection, because of the larger tank area, if I look down here, you'll very much be able to see the box of cylinders between my legs there. When you look on an adventure, all you can see is the very back of them because they're sort of shrouded by the side of the... Um, by the side of the very large tank fairings. So I would say without question, it is far better weather protection. Am I going to buy it? There's the million dollar question. And all I will say to you is, on my way back to Southampton, I've not put a deposit down yet. So watch this space. Hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you think you'll enjoy watching these videos in the future. And also, keep an eye out for whether there comes a video on a 1250 GSTE Adventure exclusive. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.